Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome again to the Mind, Body, Spirit Network Meetup Group for helping you with your online marketing um, efforts. So every week we have a particular uh, online marketing topic, and this week we're talking about how to formulate an ongoing email marketing strategy. And last week we, we spoke about email automation, so this is like kind of the next step in the, um, in the strategy. So I want to really emphasize how important it is to create an email marketing strategy and calendar. So they're kind of one and the same thing. Strategy takes it a little deeper in a marketing sense, but a calendar is kind of easier for most beginners to kind of grasp. I just want you to realize that you do not want your list to go dead like Miss Lynn has done, <laughs> admittedly. <laughs> Because you're, one way or another, you're, you're spending time, money, and effort generating those leads. And if you let them go dead, it's like a kind of a crime. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So keep in mind that if you're investing in a website, any type of online marketing, paid ads for sure. You don't want to run paid ad campaigns if you don't have a, a follow-up email marketing strategy going on. Because successful online marketers would tell you, I think the number is 80% of their revenue is coming from email marketing. That's a huge number. So if you want to have an online business, this, this is key to your ongoing success and continuing, continuing to have conversations with your current clients for sure but potential new clients as well. You wanna nurture your new leads so that they can come to know you and love you. And eventually, some of these people will become raving fans of yours and they wanna hear everything you have to say. And your little self is, yeah, I got nothing to say. Who wants to hear what I have to say? <laughs> that is not true. And if you look at some of the email marketing things that you continue to receive and you don't unsubscribe to, that's evidence that people are still interested in whoever they're interested in. You know, I'm on a lot of lists and I don't unsubscribe to them because I know sometimes subject lines come across my desk that I want to pay attention to and I do. So turn that around on yourself and realize that some people opted in because they really do want to hear what you have to say. You are expert in what you do at some level and you can always look outside yourself and say, oh, there's someone better than me. But forget that because 90% 90 90 of the population doesn't know what you don't know or spend the time understanding what you know. So you have value. And you need to have the courage to remind yourself of that. <laughs> and I'm telling you, all of you have value. And if you didn't, I'd be like, I'd mute you and I'd unvideo you and you wouldn't be here. <laughs> I'm not that mean, but you know, you know my point. So. Um, so another thing you want to re be reminded of is that if you have a client list and there are people that are already buying from you, do not drop the ball on them because they are 20 times more likely to buy from you again and they want to. So don't think that that isn't true. That's, I was a retailer and anytime I you know, sent a message to my list, my revenue went up significantly. So at the very least, you want to be talking to those current clients you already have. So uh, a lot of, uh, inf I study with a company called digitalmarketer.com. They're pretty well known in the online marketing world and they stand out as leaders. And they're doing so much, e uh, so much online marketing that their data you cannot ignore. I can't even begin to keep up. They literally send out billions of emails a year. And they're doing it across many industries, not just online marketing. They have other um, niches that they serve. Some are, um, for instance, it's a do-it-yourself crafting website they have. <laughs> Who would have think online marketers would do that? But it's a big market, and they're serving it. And they're sending out uh, communications to all of their different types of lists all the time. So the data that they have to share is huge, and I'm going to share what I can with you. So they recommend... Well, as, as if you're a serious online marketer and you're doing an online business, there's no reason why you can't send out five emails a week. And you're all thinking, holy, I can't do that. 
I'm thinking the same thing. I'm having a hard time keeping up at the moment. But eventually, I have enough content to share that I could easily do that. And we're going to talk about what that content should look like. Because you don't want to step on anyone's toes where they're like, you know, I don't need five emails a week from you. Unless, of course, you really have a strategy as to what the content is of those. And it's not all about me, me, me and my business. That's not what it's all about. So I would, I would love to see each of you create a calendar where you can do one a week. That would be fantastic. And we'll talk about what that content could be. For smaller businesses, two a month, okay. But less than that, mm, once a month is a little, you're going you're gonna to have people go cold on you because they're like, don't remember why they signed up and who you are. So you got to stay in front of them. And don't worry if someone unsubscribes because you're not their target. They're not interested anymore, which is fine. It's not a reflection of you at all. They're just not interested. And I have a lot of people unsubscribe because I'm, I'm generating a lot of leads right now. And I have unsubscribers every day, which is fine because it's telling me I'm not, I'm not the right fit for them. And that's good because I want to refine my target and I want my leads to have an open rate of 40% like Ms. Lynn Ruoff has. That's a good, that's a very good sign that your list is healthy and responsive. So 20% open rate is still very good as well. And then the click through rate is a whole other thing, which we're not going to get into it. So the, the first piece of content that's like a no brainer and it serves tons of purposes is a blog. And a blog is really a value driven piece of sh written content that you're sharing to enhance your reader's life. Either, you know, you're going to inspire them, you're going to um, give them new ideas, whatever it is, you're going to shift them in some way. And you don't have to write a book either. So here's the strategy with the blog. And I really want to say blogs matter to your website presence and to building kind of a following and having a body of content and knowledge that um, can build relevancy as a expert in your field according to the search engines. And that's a whole other topic, but a blog is an absolute great piece of content to share in an email. And when you do it, I want you to only share a snippet of that blog, not the whole thing, because I want you to drive traffic from your email to your blog. And now you're starting to create, because you want people to get to your website and then, you know, wander <laughs> after they read the blog. So that's the strategy of that. And it's a super simple email to make after you write the blog. You're just going to grab like, uh, you'll make a great headline as to what the blog is. Thanks, Deborah. And then you will um, just copy uh, the first paragraphs of the blog and then link it to read more. That's it. Of course, you got to write the blog. <laughs> but let me tell you, you can recycle that sharing of the blog six months from now because maybe 40% of the people will even look at, open the email. So don't be afraid of duplicating content and sending it in a different way. So the next half of our session, we're going to talk about types of email. And I think I'm going to take a minute just to sort of go over the types of email ideas that you can use. And then we'll do a quick breakout room and then um, finish up. So types of emails, and this is an important one. This is part of the breakout room is come up with a personal get to know you better email that relates to your business in some way, but talks about you and who you are. So for me, I love the, the topic. Uh, I'm a student of consciousness and I have some great insights to share on that topic. And I can tie it back to my members and people in the audience because we all share the same problems <laughs> or issues in life and how to address them. Another great email idea is a quote of the week. And Cheryl Murphy used to do a, the hotline from the heavens with the name of her quote of a week. It'd be a simple quote with a picture. That's it. In MailChimp, you can create a postcard template with a picture, share the quote, voila, you're off and good to go. And you guys don't have to write this down because I have a piece of paper that I'm going to share with you at the end. <laughs> Stop writing. <laughs> okay. Um, quote of the week is also another great piece of content you can share on social media. 
You can, you can double up. This content can be shared everywhere. Remember, if you're making one piece of content, share it everywhere. Another uh, quick email idea is a postcard of an image and a service or a product. Just an intro. You don't need to sell it. You're just going to introduce it. If Cheryl, Cheryl has a meditation, for example, she could have a beautiful picture and share this healing meditation. That's it. Don't say anything more and a place to buy it. Keep it simple. Um, a case study or proof of what you're, what you're doing. And Cheryl, I'm going to use Cheryl today. She sent out an email to the Healing Prayer Circle sharing testimonials of people's results. And like Barbara said, and my reaction to it was, wow, Cheryl, that was a powerful email. I felt it. Barbara felt it. I'm like, wow. That, and it was genuine and true and a great way to, to just reaffirm that what you're doing is on target and other people are seeing that. Research and compelling statistics and information. That's a great topic. Research in your field. You don't have to be the knowledge base, but you do the research, you share the stats. That's what I'm doing. I'm sharing stats about um, email open rates, stuff like that. Uh, testimonials and customer success stories. That's exactly what I just said about Cheryl's thing. You can create a survey. You want to find out more about your clients and who they are, and you can use surveymonkey.com to do that. It's a fun service and it's free. So I want to do a breakout room because I don't want to run this too long. And the question for the breakout room is what topic would you share about yourself? So I want you to share something personal in an email campaign. And what would you, how do you tie it back to your business? That's what I want to know. What do you want to share about yourself that's personal? Some ideas. And how do you tie it back to your business? So Deborah, launch away, my friend. Oh, hold on. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, it doesn't say mix up. But I'm gonna just um, there should be a drop down option, I think. Or recreate on the bottom left. Okay, that's what I did. That's it. Sorry. And let's just do four minutes when you at the cutoff time. So, because we're running a little late, Deborah. Okay, sounds good. <gasps> Lucky me! Look who I get. <laughs> Rita, can you unmute yourself, Honey Buns? Oh my goodness! There you are. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> yes. So we're being recorded. So <laughs> we're going to stick to topics instead of getting personal. <laughs> so Rita, how would you, what would you share? Well, the question was personal. So that was interesting. Yes. Yes. So uh, I want to share my success with the whole food plant-based vegan. Because that's um, been a huge You're a little hard to hear, Rita. Can Let's see. I'll turn up my volume too. <laughs> Maybe that'll help. <laughs> Is that better? Yes. Thank you. Still hear me okay? Yep. Okay. So I want to share my uh, success with the whole food plant-based eating because that's been a big life change for me. What was it, Rita? I didn't hear you. Trying to get this mix. Is that better? Uh, yeah. So I want to share my success with whole food plant-based eating. Oh, okay. Yes. Nice. Yes. Because that's been a big life change for me. Nice. To not be on a yo-yo thing of weight gain, weight loss, weight gain, weight loss. Yeah. It's just been a steady state since January 2015. 15? Nice. Yes. And how do you tie that back to your business? Well, Donna Kent's the integral health model in biological health nutrition is a very um, important aspect of people to look at in their life. Nutrition, fitness, 
and self-regulation. So oh. This is an um, absolute huge example of how I apply the integral health model to my own health and then it, able to bring programs forward with Dr. Greg Feinsinger's talks on the research behind plant-based eating, our monthly potlucks, a whole food plant-based potlucks that we hold, and uh, also um, supporting Dr. Feinsinger with his um, seeing clients for um, consultations at our office every Monday morning. Cool. So it totally ties in. Nice. It does tie in. <laughs> Are you doing any emails that tie you in personally? Um, I haven't done that yet. So okay. Great hint. Okay. So my, uh, mine is my studies in the map of consciousness and understanding consciousness and how that affects us in our lives and how we make decisions. And I, use, I love tying it into my business because I want to help my members with some, you know, levels of consciousness that we all struggle with, which is self-worth and financial worth and all that type of thing. So there's, I have some great um, tie-ins in that regard. And it's just general well-being. <laughs> and I don't want to be a mind, body, spirit network and be mindless, bodiless, spiritless. <laughs> so um, that's how I like to tie that in. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. I think, um, I think kind of tying in what you do outside of work is a nice, you know, like how you spend your time is a nice way to share in how you kind of recognize that time outside of work is important and that it kind of rejuvenates you when you go back to work. And right now I'm all work, <laughs> almost all work and no play, but it's exciting and fun work. So that's the upside of it. But I'm trying to unwind myself at night and on the weekends to um, not get caught up in that. So, Good for you. That's a good goal, especially now that spring is coming. I know. So I'm going to try to raise my hand. Oh, here we go. For Deborah, see if she notices it. Because <laughs> she's uh, learning how to use Zoom in the breakout room. But I think our breakout time might be almost over here. So what, here we go. Hey. Hey, you saw my hand raise. I did. Cool. Oh, my thing just went off to end the breakout session. Okay, good. Go ahead and do your job. And then I want you to share, um, share yourself, Deborah, here. I want to hear what you have to say about what you would share personally. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Okay. Whoops. So Deborah, unmute yourself. You can unmute all of us, in fact. Here we go. You're not unmuted, Deborah. That's by design. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Looks like everyone's back. Yeah, and so then how do I show me? What do you mean, you can't see you? Uh uh. Oh, change your speaker view in the top right, maybe? Are you still not seeing you? Mm mm. We see you. Oh, good. That's fine then. Okay. All right. The thing that I would share with my with my team is my story of how I got into the into this business. Um, I was just explaining to Lynn that both of my parents died. Um, I was involved with a corporate, well, first mommy died, and then I was dealing with daddy, and he was dying, so I was dealing with that. I was working at a company that didn't align with my views of ethical eth eth ethics and how I wanted to be in the world, so I was, it was presenting to me with health issues. And so um, I wanted to, at some point, um, 
one of my friends invited me to the Oprah Live Your Best Life tour in Atlanta. Fun. And I was introduced to the fact that, hey, it's your life and you can do something about it. You can have the life that you want. So that kind of began my journey. I, um, Deepak Chopra was one of the speakers at that event. And I just connected with that whole thing. Nice. So I started meditating. It, it, it started improving my anxiety, started meditating, started, and Deepak Chopra has an aggressive mailing and email strategy. <laughs> uh, he got me. And um, I went to the, uh, to the Chopra Center in California, in Carlsbad, for a um, mindfulness weekend. And so began my journey with Ayurveda, meditation and yoga. And now I'm a certified Chopra instructor and doing what I want to do in the world instead of what somebody tells me, whether it agrees with what my spirit says or not. So I'm very, very happy with the journey. Nice. Tell us, tell us all your website name again, Deborah. It's gratefulomelife.com. Love it. All right. We're running kind of late. So I want to move on to the next part of this very quickly. I'm not going to be able to finish it all. So I am going to share a link to this document of what I'm reviewing today. And for members of the network, this document will also be in your members folder. So you can refer to it or have a place to keep it. So um, let's see. Let me just look at what's going on. So I want to reiterate something really important and we covered this in our video presentation. How important video is in your online marketing? It's huge. And studies have shown that if you put a video in an email, you're likely to get 20% convert, higher conversion by having a video in your email. And let me remind you, you cannot actually upload a video and put it in an email. You have to actually go to YouTube, for example, wherever you're hosting that video, you're going to screen grab it, and then you're going to crop it in some type of um, image manipulation software. And I know pickmonkey.com and canva.com can help you do that. You would upload the image and then crop it for what you want. But the most important um, part of that video is that you actually see the play button. I'm going to share my screen real quick of this document that I'm going to share with you today. Um, so you see what I mean. So this document here, if you see this image, I screen grabbed this image of a, of a YouTube video I created. And right here, this play button is the biggest call to action on this page. <laughs> And it's highly responsive. When people see that play button, they're like, oh, it's a video. So what you would do in your mail, in your mail uh, email campaign is you would paste the video and then you would link it to wherever you want them to go to see the video. The easiest way is to send them to your YouTube channel. And that's fine for now, as long as you have some really good copy in the description of your YouTube video that will bring these people back to your website or somewhere else. I feel like a better strategy is to create a simple blog on your own website where you embed the video and then you send them to your website and your blog page because again, um, you want to get them engaged in who you are and what you do on a website, not necessarily in a YouTube channel unless you have a really sophisticated YouTube uh, kind of strategy. And I won't, I don't think that most of you do. Kate could, however, because she's well on her way to, to being able to do that. But I would rather you send it to um, your website. And I have another part of this presentation that's really more for advanced marketers. They're more advanced in their business. And I don't have a lot of time. So I'm just going to um, review quickly what someone like Kate and certainly Cheryl Murphy is in this ballpark right now, something to consider, even though <laughs> Cheryl doesn't like writing that much. <laughs> you did fantastic though with that last email, honey. So when you become a serious online marketer, digital marketer will send out five emails a week. 
And the strategy is um, day one will be a Monday. They start their emails on a Monday. And you want to keep in mind who you're speaking to. Some of your audience are going to be your super fans. They're going to love everything that you do and send. And another part of your audience are going to be problem solvers. They just want to get to the meat of the matter. How are you going to help me? So you've got to keep this in mind when you're writing emails. So on Monday, they do a blind email. And the goal of this email is to be fun, endearing, and show your personality. This is kind of could be the personal side of you. And you want to inspire a click somewhere. I don't know what it is you want to promote, but you want to inspire a click somewhere. And it could be anywhere. It could be a product page. It could be a YouTube channel. It could be a Facebook page. Whatever you want. You want to just have this light and fun. Day two is more of a direct promotion that's really getting to the meat of the matter. And this is addressing your problem solvers. It could be the exact same offer or click through intention as Monday, but you want to speak to the problem solvers in this email. So Monday is the fun personality one for your raving fans. Two is the direct promotion. And don't worry that you're sending the same copy just with a little bit of twist two days in a row, because remember, 20% of those people maybe will open it. And they may, if it's a different subject line on a different day, you're going to have different people opening it. Uh, day three is Wednesday and they do content only. So this is where you share your blog. It can be on any day of the week, but you're not promoting anything. You're just sharing your wisdom and your expertise and you're providing something of super high value that they could take to the bank that day is great. If you can give me a tip that I can use today, yay. Because people have very short attention spans, as you know. <laughs> day four, Thursday, take a break. Now, this is a lot for all of you, but you, you could mix it up and take one of these ideas and do one of the ideas once a week, spread it out for now. So you get into the groove of what it, this type of content feels like and see what type of response you get. So you're just going to play with it. Uh, day five and six would be Friday and Saturday and digital marketer to call this wildcard day. Have fun with it. Do whatever you want. Do a flash sale. Share a quote. You know, Share somebody else's information, like a book, a book you love. Share something you loved about somebody else. Cheryl has done that a lot. She's sharing other teachers and other um, mediums that she works with, and she's happy to share what you learned from somebody else. That is, that is big to, to refer others. So we're at 10 o'clock, and I don't want to go any longer today. And that's a whole other topic, and I, I can really come back to that um, in another, in another um, presentation. Um, and for Cheryl and Kate, I'm happy to, <laughs> to go over that, but I'm gonna share that right now, this document, so that you guys have it. There's a link to it in my Dropbox, and you can print it out and just use it for some ideas. There's email ideas. And okay, there we go. So um, if anyone needs to leave, you're welcome to leave. And then Deborah, you might want to tell them what's up for next week. And I am sticking around for questions too. I want you guys to answer, uh, ask questions. But Deborah, why don't you tell us what's up for next week? And then whoever has to go can go. Okay. Um, next week, the topic is, um, actually, Liz is going to share the exciting results of one of our newest MBSN members. I didn't know it was MBSN. Oh, <laughs> I was always saying mind body. <laughs> but anyway, um, it is also an open question forum again, time again. Yeah. So be sure to bring your questions. Um, and um, that'll be a time when we're going to be able to discuss those. Yeah. And I know everyone wanted to, some people wanted more information on MailChimp. So email me what you want to know so that I can be prepared for it because it might be some instructional stuff. So I want to be prepared to share my screen and go through whatever process you need help with. So email me about that or ask in the Facebook group. And if anyone else has, who has questions about this ongoing email strategy? Any questions about that? Everyone, you can unmute everyone, Deborah. Um, Trying to get there. Okay. <laughs> 
Kate's given us a tour of her home. She's a real big girl. <laughs> Busy. <laughs> so um, did anyone have any questions about this email marketing strategy or um, have any other ideas you want to contribute? Kate, do you have a question? Yeah, I mean, is it ever too many emails? Well, Digital Marketer has found five works for them. Five. Five a week. And it's outlined in that document, and you'll have it in your members folder as well, Kate. Thank you. And as long as you're remembering who your audience is and sharing valuable stuff that's interesting and video or whatever, and Kate, you have tons of video to share, I would just take advantage of that. Keep it simple for yourself. And um, if you get start to get high, you know, opt, you know, unsubscribe rates, then you might want to take a look at it or realize that you're just fine tuning your audience, which is even better. You, you want a highly targeted and responsive audience. Uh, Deborah, were you going to say something? Well, no, I, I think I answered my own question. I was um, just like, I don't have any, I'm at the beginning right now. Does, should all of the emails be a call to action or can? No. Okay. No. Like that Wednesday one about just blogging, there's no call to action. Just send them to the blog, let them read, let them peruse your website, get to know you. Okay. Uh, if, there, if you want to have a call to action, be subtle in some of them. Don't go screaming out with an image and just say, you know, I have a, if you'd like to know more about this product, click here. You know, something that's always be relevant. So as long as it's relevant related, yes. You can always have a call to action, but you you want to be subtle. You're not you don't want to always be trying to get something from somebody. Be a giver, and then allow the high energy attractor fields of giving and receiving do their magic. <laughs> Perfect. Thank be you. that love channel that you are. That's all you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, you're new. Why don't you ask a question, Honey Buns? <laughs> well, I've you been. Have um, I've been thinking through how this fits for me. One part of my business has an email, a built-in email marketing, and I'm adding to that um, a self-created social media uh, sales funnel. So I've just, I've just been kind of, you know, wheels turning, like how do I fit all the pieces together, kind of. Okay, so you're saying you have an email automation series always already set up? Yeah, and it's uh, it's a done for me. So, um, but you created the emails, right? No. Oh, someone else wrote the emails. Yeah. Can you edit it? Um, no. Hmm. Not for that. But I wouldn't even want to. Like, okay, I would be like, why would I bother? Like, that would yes. be extra work. Create. We want your voice, my dear. <laughs> right. It's well, you. I, I have my voice in lots of places, but for this particular thing, I think it's fine the way it is. So I'm just kind of trying to, and, and my voice goes on the social media part. So I'm just kind of like, how do I link all that together? And okay. You know, you might want to check out the YouTube channel and our Facebook. Are, are you on the Facebook group, Lynn? You know, I tried when I, when I clicked through to get here today. Yeah. Also tried to click through and join the Facebook group, and I think it worked. Okay, I'll. So I, I need to go back and look and make sure it did. Lynn, what's your name on Facebook so I can kind of call you out? Yeah, please do. It's L I N. Yep. Last name is S as in Sam, C H U S as in Sam, S again, L E R hyphen Williams. Holy moly. <laughs> Right. You can just call me Lynn. Hold on. <laughs> Schusler Williams. Schusler, yeah. Okay. So Schusler. I will call you out so that you can see when I, uh, I'll upload this recording so you see it, but you'll also see the other recordings. And I'll also share with you the YouTube channel where everything's in one place. Oh, good. Because you're going to want to take a look at last week's presentation was mm -hmm. on email automation. The week prior to that was developing lead magnets. Do you know what they are? Yeah. Okay. So good. this whole that's good. This whole thing, I'm going week by week in really steps to creating a sales funnel. Mm -hmm. Good. Doing. I'm not calling it that, so I don't scare anybody. Right. Right. 
but that's I get what we're that. doing. So next yeah. week is a Q and A talking about a sales funnel that's already up and going and how that's working. And then I think the week after that, I forget, I'll have to look it up. Deborah, you have it on your calendar. What's the week after the uh, Q&A forum? Please. And uh, did anyone else have questions? It is after the Q&A forum, it is going to be landing pages. Yes, I knew. Landing pages are very key in the whole sales funnel thing. So that's the week after that. So um, I, I have a question yes, Liz, about, um, I guess, list generation mm -hmm. for emails. Yep. At my meetup next week, when people sign in, can I have some type of sign in for them to specifically opt into an yep. email with me or something yes. like that? Just let them know. So you're going to ask for their name and email. And then just have a little checkbox that says, would you like to be on my list for this purpose? Is That's the best practices, not just take their email and use it, but to ask if they would like to be on that particular list, keeping them updated about um, your experience with Airbnb and best practices in design and what's going on in that realm. I think just let them know because you'll be greeting them. Definitely mm -hmm. greet people, Heather, and let them know what your intention is for that email and say, I'd love to have you sign up and let me know, have a checkbox on that sign up sheet. Yes, be a part of it. But if you can in, um, engage with each person and tell them what your intentions are for that email is just mm -hmm. to keep them abreast as to what's going on in the market. You are going to be the pulse of Airbnb and Boulder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you okay. so much, Liz. Yeah. But definitely take advantage of the meetup um, communication capability. Like definitely make a comment after each meetup and, and engage people in the conversation. Okay. Like Jesse May does. Right. right. And should I be doing that prior to the meetup as well? Uh, you can. You can definitely comment. Once, a, uh, once the event is set, there's places to comment and people will get that. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yes. The um, the name that you gave regarding the author for the love energy attractive yes. field. I'm going to share a book with everyone too. <laughs> Dr. David Hawkins, and the name of the book is Power Versus Force. It's a little bit of a tough read, but if you can get through it, you're going to shift. And I, I recommend to use it as an oracle for yourself until you get attuned to it because it's a very high frequency truth book. <laughs> um, he has three books that I love. And um, one of them, I'm going to share it right now, letting go the pathway to surrender is not necessarily what it sounds like, but it's so freaking powerful. It's transformative without outside help even though he's kind of outside help. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm sharing all these books. They're all very of high, highest consciousness. And if you don't get it, it's because you're not there yet. But that's okay. When you start to get it, you're going to shift. And um, I see this in some of my clients that I share it with. They make quantum leaps up to courage, which is where you need to be. And I'm like, whoa, cool. <laughs> They're all fantastic books. Uh, Letting Go, The Pathway to Surrender is the, probably the easiest one to read to start with. And then the other ones will help you understand his map of consciousness. This is all based on research, proven stuff. He's not making it up. So it, it helps the, you know, the rational mind grab a hold of it and realize, okay, I cannot be in fear and doubt and anger and shame about myself anymore because you are not gonna get where you wanna go when you're hanging out in those lower energy attractor fields. It's a downward spiral like a toilet. <laughs> so when you come to appreciate that all you have to do is come up to the level of courage, which is the first level of upward pulling power in anything, now you're 
now you're on to something. And this is what law of attraction people need to grasp because I was all, I got the law of attraction. I'm like, oh my God, this is powerful teachings. However, if you're beating the drum of negativity in your own being about yourself, usually, you're not going to get what you want because you're beating this negative drum. And, and the pathway to surrender is going to help you stop beating that drum and come into courage and fun and willingness. And I can tell you, I went through some really tough stuff where I didn't realize, I, I realized I should have PTSD. And there's no reason why I wouldn't because it was so horrific. But I figured, I thought I had gotten over it by myself. And then I read about PTSD. I'm like, hell no, I'm not over it. I am in the thick of it. So I had to, and, and what really shined the light, and I study this map of consciousness all the time. And I was in the con level of consciousness called desire. And in desire, you want everything. And you become frustrated and anger and disappointed because you're not getting what you want. And I didn't realize I was beating this drum of negativity that brought me down the toilet financially many ways. And I'm like, how can someone like me be in this situation? And when I realized I was in the thick of this level of consciousness, I said, I got to get out of here. I got to go to courage. Mm. And in desire, like this is, I felt like I had to win the lottery to fulfill myself. That's how little I felt inside. I'm going to cry. <laughs> That's what, when you're feeling this desire, like you just want a million dollars and you just want to win the lottery, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. So I got it. I'm like, oh crap. How could I not see this? I've been studying this forever. And then when I got into courage, which I got into in a, couple, a couple months ago, you feel the difference. You're like, wow. And guess what? I don't want a million dollars anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm like... Loving what I'm doing, money doesn't matter, everything is fine. It's a very different place. And you and it's loving and accepting, and you're like, whoa. So I I know that I came to this, you know, we're infinite beings and we're in la la land all the time out of the body. <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm gonna go in the body and let's really see what this level of consciousness is like let's see what desire and anger and frustration and resentment is like and then when i jumped into courage i saw the difference the contrast is like whoa this is what it is and when you feel it and you stand in it this is standing in your power mm -hmm. big time and i i went to this uh, alternative healer this weekend he does this sound healing with tuning forks mm -hmm. that are all different colors of the chakra and he was tuning into my third chakra, which is your power center. He's like, whoa, woman, you are powerful standing in your power. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> feel it. So anyway, that's what those books are about. And it did take quite a while to reckon. I couldn't even see myself. I'm like, I cannot believe I don't see myself. But I found it eventually. I'm like, okay, this doesn't work. So now I'm like totally having fun. And I'm good time, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody that letting go pathway to surrender you want to shift into a higher frequency of love and and stop limiting your beliefs and thoughts it's a great tool for that and you don't have to look outside for anyone else and you're going to laugh because hawkins he went through every therapy that exists on the planet you know tuning forks color therapy acupuncture <laughs> you get you're all going to laugh when you read it because it's a huge laundry list. And then when you realize it's, there's something within you that can manage all this. But the upside is, once you get through it, then you can go enjoy all these alternative therapies. They just are yummy. I don't need to solve any problems here today. Just make me feel good and touch me. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. And I, I just want, while well, everyone's here, I want to welcome Kate. She's our newest Mind, Body, Spirit member who we are launching Facebook ad campaigns for. We are going to send her to the moon with all her relationship expertise. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> Is that your daughter? Yes, it's her birthday today. Hi, honey. Happy, Hi. Birthday. Happy birthday. She turned six. 
Six. Hi, sweetheart. What's your name? Evelyn. Emily. Evelyn. Evelyn. I'm sorry, Evelyn. I'm sorry. Happy sweet birthday, yeah. honey. Yeah. We love your mother. Uh -huh. We're going to help her buy a playground for you. <laughs> oh, my God. Happy birthday. All right. We're going we're gonna to call. It's a wrap today, everybody. Thank you for Thanks, coming. Liz. It was a great joy to have everybody. And Deborah, thank you for being my co-